Now, when God joined together a man and a woman, then those two are one body, as far as God can see, it's one unity, one entity. God sees a married couple as one. So whatever your spouse does, you can't say, well, that's her business and my business is separate. No, no, no. You're together. You are responsible. Both of you are responsible for each other's actions. God sees a married couple as one. It commands the bond of unity. We, we see that in scriptures. He commands the bond of unity in the same way he commands the whole earth, the whole world, in fact, into being. Mark chapter 10, verses 8 and 9 read, And the two will become one flesh. And the two will become one flesh, so that they are no longer two. They are no longer two. So if you're thinking of living separate lives under the same roof, you're wrong. Or if you're already doing that, you're wrong. You're wrong. You need to live your lives together as one. So you don't have two lives, two separate lives living together under one roof of one life together as a united entity. Mark chapter 10 verse 8 and 9 reads again, And the two will become one flesh, so that they are no longer two of one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, what therefore God has joined together, now this is important, let no man separate. Now we read that quite nonchalant and casually, even passed by that, but it is very important when it says, what therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. This is why I say the command of the bond and unity of the marriage is the same. Uh, same command, the same way is commanded by God. It's a command. It's even beyond command. A command. It's even beyond and above a, a command from God. It's the same way God said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be earth. Let there be let there be man in our image. All that is the same way he's saying now here, let no man separate what God has joined. So it's basically a prophecy from God. God says the word and it doesn't go back to him in vain. God's words are never in vain. Mark chapter 10 verses 8 and 9 read, And the two will become one flesh, one flesh, so that they are no longer two. So you're not living two separate lives, totally different from each other, under one roof, calling it marriage. That's not marriage. Not according to God. Not according to the scriptures. And the two will become one flesh, so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Now, that last part, let no man separate, is a prophecy. Those words are not just a recommendation. They are even beyond and above a command from God. Let no man separate. It's the same way God said, let there be light. And there was. And anything God says happens. God never uses a single word in vain. We read that in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 to 12, read, For as the rain comes down, and the snow from the sky, and doesn't return there, but waters the earth, and makes it grow and bud, 
and give seed to the sower and breath to the earth. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in things I sent it to do. So whatever he says, it will do it. Those words will do their job. Whatever God says will happen. Whatever he says, he will do. So when, when he says, let there be light, there is light. And when he says, let no man separate, or God is joined. If your marriage is joined together by God, no man can separate. Be assured of that. If you join together in marriage by God, no man can separate. No woman can separate. Nothing can separate. Be assured of that. It's a promise of God. God promises there. Let no man separate. Now, people might ask, well, uh, why is there so many divorces in the church then? Well, divorce is a totally different subject and it requires its own sermon. It's huge. It's a huge subject. But however, a short, brief answer to that question would be it's because of man's will, not God's will. It is not God's will for you to divorce. In fact, God is totally against that, and we'll read about that in a minute. But it's not God's will. Man is forcing it. When I say man, I mean mankind. They're forcing that. They're going, there. it's, it's, they're going against God's law, God's command. They're disobeying God's law. And that will not solve anything. In fact, it will bring lots of curses. Because you're going against what God has said should not be. You're going to do something or you're doing something that God has already said there shouldn't be. Because you're disobeying God's law, God's command. You're going against His word. So you're not going to get any blessings. In fact, you'll bring to your life and upon yourself God's curses. We see that Jesus was also asked a similar question about the lawfulness of divorce. And Jesus explains that Moses allowed divorce then because then your hearts were hardened. But now the laws of God has been written in your hearts and minds. It's not the same anymore. And in fact he explains further and he calls it adultery and the person who is giving away or divorcing his wife causing her to be a prostitute.